authority. His life, His character, His ministry is first. Once we enter into that type of kingdom living and begin to practice the principles of the kingdom, then all the blessings of the kingdom are released in us as we grow in Him. John said he prayed that we prosper as we grew in Him. And, and a lot of folks say, I've been saved a while and, and, and I don't understand why I'm not being blessed like everybody else. I'm not able to do what everybody else does. Maybe you, maybe you just hadn't died yet. Well, nobody told me about death. All I heard was all this new life in Christ. You can't have the new life in Christ without the old life dying. Otherwise you have bitter and sweet water trying to run together. Folks, it's it's not both. It's either or. It's it's one or the other. The church in this nation is in the mess that it's in is because we have tried to mix the things of the fallen natural world with the things of the kingdom of God. And it has produced a lukewarm church. A church that just... Goes through and well, whatever will be, will be. Well, I'm just going to keep my relationship with the Lord right. Whatever will be, will be. Silence is sin. Jesus, Jesus said, "If you deny me before men, I'll deny you before the Father." And when we don't, I don't know if y'all can handle the rest of this thing or not, because I'm just. We've produced a lukewarm church. It's all about us. Oh, we put smatterings of feel goodism, scriptures, and what we teach and preach. But somebody told me last week, said, you know, I think you're going to end up being one of them last day's preachers that everybody gets mad at. <laughs> What's new? Well, I, that, that was no mighty revelation. S- somebody's got to tell the church the truth. Somebody's got to tell church people the truth because they are not getting the whole truth. We need to understand lukewarm Christianity will not overcome in this last days and lukewarm people will be spewn out of the Lord's mouth. That's what Jesus said. I didn't say that. I'm just quoting what the Word says. I get in more trouble just quoting the Word. God help us. The kingdom life does not begin with coronation, but rather with crucifixion. It's amazing that everybody today wants to teach about teach everybody about how they're a king without teaching them first that they have to die before they can be coronated. We have decided that the positional truth is more important than the experiential truth. I've been guilty of this a bit. You see, there are positional truths that are true about you and I. We are seated at the right hand of the Father in heavenly places. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus by virtue of the cross of Calvary. We are positionally in Christ supposed to already be dead. But I'll be real honest with you. Knowing the position, the positional truth and experiencing the truth of that reality are two entirely different things. And some of the most deceived Christians walking the face of the earth are the smartest when it comes to know the positional truth but have no understanding. They've never looked in the mirror to see that they're not experiencing what they espouse. And it's called hypocrisy. Yeah. Well, Lord, that, that, that got really quiet on that one. 
Now, I just laid these out here because I, I could preach four sermons off of these, but I'm just going to give them to you and you, you can chew on them. First is this. We must die to self. Our wants, our desires, our stuff, the way we want things to work out, we must die to that. We must turn our back on it and ask the Lord what His life is for us. Now, what we don't understand is this, is that what God has for us is so much better than what we have for ourselves. <laughs> but our flesh lies to us. Secondly, we must die of the old ways of thinking. I know a few things more important after becoming a child of God than renewing our mind. We still think wrong. After I got saved, I didn't suddenly know everything. There was a process of renewing that had to take place. My spirit was born again. That makes me a child of God. But my soulish man, my, will, my mind, my will, and my emotions are in a process of transformation. And it's all good because Jesus promised, He who began a good work in you will carry it out until the day of completion. But before that mind can be renewed, the old thinking has to die. Third, we must die to the way we act. The old fleshly ways won't cut it anymore. <laughs> I, I believe everybody has a right to defend themselves if somebody's coming at us to kill us. I do. But Jesus said if a person slapped you on one side of the face to turn the other cheek and let him slap you on the other. What he was saying was this, is if a person wants to offend you in one way, turn around and let him offend you in another. Don't fight back. You see, my first reaction when somebody slaps me, you slap me with your right hand, I'm going to come back at you with my right. left hand. That, that's the natural response. It, it's a fight response. But what we've got to choose immediately is where are we going to fight? Are we going to fight in the flesh? Come on, buddy. No, I can't take you. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to back out of here. Am I going to fight it in the flesh or am I going to take it where it belongs and fight it in the Spirit? Right. And once I get into the Spirit, am I going to fight it according to God's ways or am I going to try to twist Scripture to fight it my way? God, go get them. God, go get them rather than God, forgive them. Ah. We must out of the old way we respond to circumstances and situations. Natural responses like those of the world must no longer control us. We have to develop a second nature in the way we react to things. Question. How do we die without dying? Kind of like the question Jesus or Nicodemus asked Jesus when he said that you must be born again. And Nicodemus looked at him, how are we going to get born again when I'm old? Well, it's a spiritual thing. God's not trying to kill you physically. But he is trying to kill the old fleshly man that is in you. Or better, he would rather you follow the example of Jesus and submit to the cross willingly. Yes. Romans 6 has this wonderful truth in, in, in being dead in Christ and, and being buried with him and being raised to new life. But what we need to understand is that once Jesus realized the will of the Father which he knew from the beginning, was for him to be the sin bearer and for him to die, he willingly submitted to it so that he could become the last Adam. In other words, he was willing for the seed of his life to die and go into the ground so that it could be resurrected and produce more than it could have produced. The Lord wants us to follow the example of Jesus. And after we've received Christ as our Savior, we understand the realities of the cross of Calvary and, 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 and all that. The Lord now wants us to voluntarily submit to death to self. <laughs> now, there's two ways to die. Quick. Virtually painlessly. Or suffering. Here's what I've noticed. 
For a believer, quick death is the best way to go. I mean, we're all wimps when we start thinking about death. Nobody wants to suffer, right? I'm, be honest. Let's just get real here. I don't want to talk about death on Sunday morning. It's Easter week. It's all about death, burial, and resurrection. If I could choose the way I die, I want to die quick. I'm here. I'm there. Don't matter how. It's not an issue. I... That's not the issue. It's just, it's quick. Here, there. <laughs> Wonderful. The problem with that is, is that when we die that quick, it's such a shock to everybody else, they don't know what to do. Painful. So the second way to die is to suffer in death. Some disease, some something comes, and, and, and the per- it's, it's harder on the person dying. I mean, it may, it may take months or years for them. To die. But in some weird way, it's almost easier on everybody else around them to watch them die slowly because they can get used to them dying. And once a loved one gets to a point of suffering enough, there comes a time when everybody around them says, oh, it's time for them to go. And we mean it, right? Let's put it in spiritual terms. When you and I choose to die quickly to the things of the world and just make a decision that we're going with Jesus, and suddenly everything that we used to do with all our friends, we don't do anymore. They're like, well, what What happened to George? Well, she won't do anything anymore. Nothing. I can't even get her to take a toke. Not even. Just, she won't. Man, all, all I did just. They won't even take one little pill with me. They. They won't join in with me in my cussing and fussing anymore. Well, who do they think they are? (laughs) But you see, we Christians think it's 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 better if we die slowly. At least, and watch this. You see, we would rather look at everybody else's rotting flesh dying slow so it comforts us because we have yet to die to self so our stinking flesh doesn't smell as bad as their stinking flesh. You see, somebody that dies quick and gets on with it with the Lord leaves you without excuse while you still choose to die slowly to stuff. Well, the Lord hadn't spoken to me about that yet. Yes, He has. You just ain't been listening. Yeah, He has. Yeah, yeah, He has. Yeah, He has. Because just when I said that, the Lord put the finger on whatever it was. Yeah, you... You see, believers know instinctively because the divine seed's in us. We know instinctively, oh, no, shouldn't, shouldn't be. But you see, when we, when we talk about all our struggling with this stuff, it makes everybody around us feel better. Because, well, I'm struggling with myself too, with my stuff too. Now, some things are a process. I'm not trying to put a spirit of condemnation on you. I'm just telling you that some stuff you just have to put the sword to and quit. Birds of a feather flock together. Quit running around with people with the same problems you got. Oh, I just, man, I just, I just messed up bad right there. I just messed up bad. The best way to get over something or out of something is to run with people that are not involved in that which you have been running with. I better shut up or I'm going to go somewhere where it's going to just make everybody. Oh, Lord. Let me 
me see. You and I have to die to the